Good morning. Hello again. Thanks for tuning in. So we're back on the banks of the mighty Trent again today and it's uh, early October and we're fishing with open tears. We've had a few run downs and uh, I've literally bought, I've got no maggots, no casters. I've literally got open tears. I've got corn and a few worms for a change hook bait. But we're coming towards the end of the tear season uh, really now. And I've chosen to swim upstream of the suspension bridge on the on the West Bridgeford side. We've got a northwesterly breeze. And it's quite cool. Quite cool at the moment. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Not enough frost or anything. We've got 10 or 12 degrees overnight. Forecast up to about 16 this afternoon. But we've come for a few hours on Sunday morning. See if we can catch some roach. If you look at the swim I've chose, I'm trotting down towards the old suspension bridge and the actual first pillar that's set out from the, from the bank. Now downstream of this, it's really deep water. If you've seen the previous video down here, I was catching a quite a, a mixed bag of fish. Uh, but here, just for fishing tears and hemp, I'm hoping just to catch, really, pick out some specimen roach and ignore all the little bleak. You might get the odd dace on a tear, ignore the perch and just really target the roach at the end of the... I would say October is sort of the end of the roach season where they feed, where they feed well. As long as it stays mild, they'll carry on feeding. But it's still mild at the moment. So I'm trotting down. We'll have a look at the rig in a bit more detail in a bit. I'm trotting down towards the pillar and hopefully go outside of the pillar if it reaches that far if we go outside of the pillar let the float run around the side of it see if there's any big fish actually under the bridge and then we've just had the one bite so far and the one roach in the half a dozen casts It's a busy Sunday morning, plenty of dog walkers, runners, joggers. I try and pick me moments to come and do this type of fishing, just when the weather and the wind is right. A couple of days ago we had well, Hurricane Ian's gone through Florida and we've got the remnants of it in the UK and it was, it's been absolutely horrendous. So the water's up a little bit, it's running through nicely, got a nice colour to it. Two days ago we had a lot of rain, but you see there's a lot of debris on the surface. I don't really mind that, it sort of helps hide me, the float, the rig, the line. But I was really expecting to wait probably an hour before I started getting bites. So we had one bite already. One fish. Pretty good going. We want to keep feeding, trickling in twice every every run through. From running through at a distance, I'll be feeding again, sort of halfway down for the first hour, and just try and get them really interested. If you've been doing any roach fishing on the Trent and Nottinghamshire, or even right anywhere around the UK. You mean having success on any different types of baits? Leave a comment in the description. Let's have, share some of that knowledge. Because as ever, I'm looking for the big roach. I know years ago my dad used to fish wheat. So I would, um, I've not tried that. I've fished it before, but not for many a year. I think I might try some there. Yeah, might give it a go. Probably leave that till next season now. Yeah. Well, it's such a brilliant summer. It's, the fishing has just been phenomenal on commercial venues and on the trend. The mighty big barbel that's been coming out. Bags of coarse fish. The matches have been great as well. 
some great weights on the, some of the river matches in Nottinghamshire. So I've got the 17 foot float rod. It helps with casting and fishing the stick float further out from the bank in a way. So I'm running through, I've got, probably got about nine foot on. Nine foot of depth on at the moment. A little bit further out, just around about ten foot. So I've got but a nice depth, but not the real, it's not a real deep swing that I was hoping for. But we're not having fished it before. It's a mystery to know what, uh, if there's any quantity of roach actually in this swing. I'm hoping as the bait washes around the pillar, the water leaves the other side, it picks up the interest of some roach and they come moving up into the swim. Hopefully. I've only come for a morning session, feeding quite heavy. I've got a couple of pints of infant tears, probably about half and half. I'm really hoping to catch their eye and get them feeding on the tear. And if there's any bigger ones in the swim, I'll keep them interested. Trotting right down to that pillar, and it starts to drag on just as it gets near it. Lots of boats this morning. Always is on a Sunday. I'll change to a bit of hemp in a minute. Just try that. I've I've had some really nice sessions on empties this summer. I don't know if you've seen some of the other videos, but I filmed quite a few Trent videos this year. There was already about 20 on from the first year and a half I was doing the filming and put those on the channel, so check out that playlist. There's some barbel ones as well, I've had some good barbel sessions this summer. Twenty tears and fifty grains of hemp each put through, and then halfway down, put another lot in. Oh yeah, second bite, and um, nice quality roach. Not massive. Could probably have swung it in, but only my second fish. Lovely. It's got a bit of a tail damage. It's unusual. Wonder if that's perch. Another solid clunk a bit further down in the swim this one. Feels bigger than the other two, but it's quite a soft rod. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Oh yeah. Have a quick look at this one. Look 
at that beauty. Keep them carefully over the landing net. Look at that. We've only been here, what, half an hour, 40 minutes, and we've already picked up absolute beautiful fish. That's more like it. Got another really good one. Bigger than the last one. Look at that one. <laughs> Look at that beautiful fish. I'm standing proud as well. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. She's very pleased with herself. I'm not posing for the camera. <laughs> Look at the other side. With my uh, hemp and tears, I'll cook the hemp for about an hour, simmering on the stove, keep adding water till the kernel starts to show. Um, but you can buy it in tins, it's not that expensive. If you're feeding a lot with it though, it's cheaper to cook your own. With the tears, my tears are a mixture of hard and soft. I'll cook them for about an hour and a half on the stove, keep adding water in the, to the pan. After about an hour simmering, I'll take quite a few out and they're for hook baits. And then, in the and then another 15 minutes, I'll take a few more out as well and just keep checking them, cutting them with a the knife. You don't want them too firm that the knife won't cut through it. But you don't want them too soft that they just mosh up. So, take a few out at different intervals. But like the last couple of fish, the fish start to get a bit bigger, I start to increase the feed. Because if there is a shoal of bigger fish there, then uh, I like want to keep them interested. But if there's as the fish start to, to congregate closer to where the feed is in the bottom, you're getting bites a lot quicker. You are feeding a lot more quickly anyway. As it is now, I'm getting bites a bit more frequent. I'm not even getting anywhere near the stanchion. Before I've got a bite, so. Missing bites on tear. It's so always worth re checking your tear. Make sure there's plenty of hook showing. If you missed a couple of bites, it might not be much of the hook because the tear's moved a little bit. Another bite missed. When we used to come down here on the county all side in the summer when we were kids, we used to probably bring about four or five pints for the day. I mean, we used to spend maybe 10 or 12 hours when we were kids. And all day in the summer, catching big bags of roach and skimmers. I've had a few skimmers this year on empty tears. Uh, 
just see if we can get any out of this from today. It's trying a bit further out now. It's running through. We've got another metre further out, see if it's anything a bit further. We've seen bigger, a bit further away from the bank. smallest one so far. Some of those fast bites are made I think they're from smaller ones. Now. Looks like that cloud's, oh, cloud's going to be gone. Just look at that. And that's took it as soon as it's settled. The beauty about it being in just empty tears, it really focuses you know, the fish and your mind as to what to do. You're not changing between castor and maggot. And you're literally just targeting the roach and trying to get going on it. It's always been a brilliant combination though, and containers. I mean, it works well with everything really, but it works well with castor as well. But apart from the odd exception, Generally, you won't catch any bleak or dace or perch doing this. It's running through lovely. I've got a 5BB stick float on again, one of my favourites at the moment. I'm fishing a, a, bulk, a bulk shot system to get it straight down. But there's so much shit pace on the water today you couldn't really I mean you might have to do this with a whip oh, yeah. if you can get them going close in but with such a flow on today stick close ideal it's too fast for waggler better one. Again, marked bites now, most runs through. Little indications, snatching at it. There's a lot of small roach in this room at the moment. Big ones, hopefully, will follow in. Should have used the net on that one.
I did a little touch on that and I left it rather than striking. And it came back. Ten o'clock now. So we've been here fishing for an hour and a half. Probably got fifteen roach. Which is a great start. That's the first one I've bumped. Let me just check that tear. Don't like bumping them. I often think it really spooks them. Just moving the point of the hook so it's more visible. Moving the tear around. That's why I think it's important to let the bike develop a little bit. Don't strike at every little ding. Not like maggot, we often slip it instantly. Tear the, if with a harder tear, they might be just sort of mouthing the bait, see if it's soft or not. I mean, if you can fish with the softer ones, bites are better, but you've got to put one in every put down. Every time you move the float, you've got to put another bait on. So I find it hard work fishing with the softer ones. There's three bites on this tier. But we've been quite mild for October. The fish have come to the tier pretty quickly. Because I'm feeding them nothing else. And there's really nobody else fishing either. Can we get those big roach? Are they here? Pound plus fish. Just running through about a couple of metres further out again to see if there's anything just hanging back off the shoal. And another recent session, I'm catching down the waggler, casting right out. And towards the end of the session, I'm really launching it as far as I could reach. And I picked up two really, you know, fish almost a pound each. Definitely a pace to explore your swim when you're trotting. Just a bit too big to lift. Only got a little 16 hook on. There's a better one. Lovely soft action rod this is.
This is a nice fish. Oh yeah. That's quite close to the Oh god, beautiful. Quite close to the uh, rod end as well that was. Moving up in the swim. We'll have a quick look. If there's a step still for us. Will it pose? <laughs> look at that. That's a lovely stunning fish. Let's put him in the net. come off. This feels like a proper roach. They're bending the rod. A battle scarred one. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Swallowed this as well. Went over in that. I put a tail on that was slightly softer on that cast. It's a fat one, this is. Look how fat this roach is. Stunner. It looks like it's been grabbed by something. Big tail on the back. You can have a good account for it yourself as well. <laughs> Let's look at the other side. You can see. You can see where it's been grabbed at some point in its past. Something's tried to eat it. <laughs> There's a mark on it, but what a fish. Look how thick it is. Beautiful. Such a lovely fish. I mean, I've been catching some slonkers uh, this morning, which four or five really good ones. So you get a fish like that and swim another fish before. Not a really deep swim either. See if, uh, well, could be some even bigger down there. Hi, Mr. Swan. Well, as soon as I hooked into that, I knew it was a decent fish. Just felt heavy. Clunk. Not a monster. Not a bad one either. really increase the feed now so putting 20 or 30 bits of tear in probably equal to the amount of hemp I'm putting in I'm really trying to hopefully concentrate the, the big roach onto the tear see if there's anything else down there even bigger 
quality roads are nice, but I like the big ones too. Could there be any real specimens down there? Hmm. Catching quality roach, you strike into the stick boat. Long thin fish. Clunk. Right in front of the rod end, that one. Another nice fish. Oh. Oh, beauty there. Another one that's got marks on it. I'm just trying to eat it. Wind's died off a bit now. The boats have uh, slowed down a little bit. Sun's come up. It's lovely. It's early October. And we're catching fish like this as well. It's fantastic. So I just kept a close eye on the weather. It's just turned a bit. Less wind, no rain forecast, and the river with a bit of colour in it from rain from two days ago. Sometimes in conditions. They can just be good enough to bring the fish on sometimes. Of course roach like further southwesterly, don't they? But I'm feeling quite heavy at the moment now. 30 pieces of tear and um, risk overfeeding them if I was here all day but 
I'm only here for the morning. Ooh, little touch then. Another little touch. A couple of snatches at it, that one. Could be a small roach. Some changed its mind, I think. I'm getting bites so, so quickly in the swim, I'm not reaching the suspension bridge. I've not really had a chance to go around the pillars yet. I've been up to the suspension bridge. Yeah, so if, you've, uh, if you're doing any roach fishing, Share your results, put some comments. Come on, see, uh, see if you've done any empty tear fishing. Have you had any success? Hmm. Definitely got quite a few fish under the rod now. Only going a few metres downstream, I'm getting bites. Just indications, not proper bites. They're just touching it. I'm hoping the more I feed, we'll just encourage them to have more positive bites. Hopefully. We'll just check that tip. Um, certainly this method can be devastating on the right day. If the roach really switch onto it, you can get a big fish one after another. Quality roach. I've always found this, I love stick float fishing in a way. I love trotting a stick float down and catching nice fish. Quite a relaxing way of fishing. You always think there's a bit of a, a bit of a skill to, to strutting the stick float down and altering your rig, changing your hooks, altering your feed. It's really a nice way of fishing a few hours. Paddle borders. 
This is a sport that's growing. Right, so we'll have a quick look at the setup today. We have an Abu 704 Garcia Close Ferris reel. Probably one of the best reels for um, trotting, absolutely beautiful. And I've got a 17 foot carbon active um, Preston float rod. It's a lovely rod. You get, you get used to the weight of it. It's not, because it's 17 foot, they are a little bit heavier. Um, but I mean, it's a lovely rod for holding a stick float out as we go to the rest of the rig. If you've seen me other videos, you've seen this float before. It's a 5BB midi stick float. It's got four rubbers on it to give you plenty of grip. So when I move it around, it stays where it is. And it'll handle the strike without budging at all with four rubbers on it. Gives you extra rubbers in case you split one, but it also gives it a lot of grip. I'm on four pine line on the reel. Then as I go down, down to the uh, The last couple of feet, I've got bulk shot, second bulk shot, a couple of droppers next to my swivel, and then I've got a three pound trace, which is actually quite strong, isn't it, for roach fishing? And a 16 hook with my tear on. So that's the rig today. So if I was fishing mashes, I'd probably fish a bit lighter. But I have had big fish in these pegs uh, on the trend, on Trent Embankment. Big fish on on pound bottom and stuff, and it's almost impossible to get them out. And I mean, you know, proper fish, double figure fish, carp, maybe even barbel. And um, never really seen them, they go off to the middle and you can't really hold them. You're playing for as long as you can, but you end up losing them. So three pound is about the lowest, unless I can't get any bites, I might try. But three pound is about the lowest I'll go to really. It just gives you a better chance of getting a decent fish out. So when we were kids, you just, if it's pounding off, Bay of Berlin line um, back in the day. There's so many options for line these days. But that's the rig for today. It's working well at the moment. I'm getting roach, uh, roach bites most puts in, and I've had some real quality ones as well. Do a couple of touches then. Go on, take it. 
And again. That sun's really getting up now. So half past ten, quarter to eleven. It's a beautiful morning for October. Clunk. Another one. A lot of these fish look brand new. Certainly had a good spawn in here. I think. Um, With the weather being so warm, it'll be a brilliant summer, aren't we? Although, not everybody will agree <laughs> if we're in drought conditions and not good for the garden and the grass and everything. But the fish have had a great year. I mean, they've been emptying it in commercial fisheries. I mean, 100, 200, 300 pound bags of fish. Trench fin fishing fantastic as well. Right at the bottom of the swim now. Starting to drag on a bit. It just shallows up near the bridge. That's a bit. 11 o'clock. One hour to go. Last hour. So double feeding extra tears now. See if we can encourage them big ones to come along. Probably by 12 o'clock I would have fed about two pints of empty tears. About a pint of each. First fish for a little while, so I'm just going to reduce the feed a little bit. Point half the amount of feeding, just for a couple of casts, and see if we can uh, see if there's any change in them. Changing them, maybe there's just not as many fish I was hoping for in the swim, or as normally happens, predator time. We've got a pike in the swim. Certainly had uh, quite a few pike on this summer. I'm just checking my roach. Yeah, I've just had a quiet ten minutes. It's a tree floating down. Got a hurricane in to thank for that. Though obviously we didn't actually get the hurricane. But it was very windy on Friday. Going absolute hula. And absolutely poured down all afternoon. Yeah. Right at the bottom of the swim. Good to win there's decent flow on it, you can really run your swim down. Just start reducing that feed a little bit. It's encouraged them, I think. 
only just liftable that one was. Since I've done that, I've just had three fish. Trying to get upstream. This one's got this one's ambitious. Not even that big, are they? Hooks come out in the net though. Probably got the last 15 20 minutes now. We'll see if we can get one or two more nice fish. We're nearly running out of uh, hemp. A few tears left. We've had a great morning though, it's been absolutely beautiful. For October, for the most part, it's been really calm. A little bit of breeze here occasionally. Had a few boats, a few swans, loads of people. So popular down here. Not so much people love walking up and down the embankment. But I appear to be the only one fishing. Again. Can we get one or two more nice ones? Before we go. So I start to increase the feed again, once I've caught those three, and then it's gone quiet again. He says, as it clunks into one, <laughs> with a nice one as well. Spoke too soon there. Go on in before the pike comes up and grabs you. And that one's got some damage on it, look. Look at that. Haven't said hold of it. Barbless hooks today again. So it makes life a lot easier. Let's put a slightly softer tear on, see if that makes a difference. Again, just reduce the feed again and got bites back again. I just get the way we lifted this one out. Another one has got tail damage. It's been biting at the tail. I wonder if there's any zander down here. Paddle borders are back. We're just going to have a few more casts, just a few more runs through, see if we can pick anything else up. And then we'll have a look at what we've caught. I'm going to get some Sunday dinner. Oh, yeah. 
What a big one, but a bite. Must have, must be on for 50 roach this morning. Must be close to it. Those you've not been here before, it's a quick pen there. So you've got the flats of the back of us in West Brisbane, Wilford area. Here's your pen round. You've got the embankment both sides. You've got the monument as you look under the bridge. And then here's your pen round to the right hand side. You can see Tramp Bridge in the distance. That's the paddle borders and the boats. In the blue of the Trump Bridge. That's where we are. It's all free fishing. Fishing is excellent as well. That's what's surprising. There's a, there's a few people here, really. Ooh, little touch. So I've not fished this swim before, but I'm going to give another go again. If they get a chance before the end of October, I want to fish the, the downstream of this bridge again, in the deeper water. Just why it's still mild before any frost start. smaller tear on, and a smaller roach. The one with a mark on the top of it, something's grabbed hold of it and let go. Oh yeah. The quality of the roach here is lovely though. A good one. So maybe just that bit of a colour in the water. It's running through nice. Another netter. So I'm just going to get ready to pack up then and caught that decent fish. I'm just trying to leave my towel. I need another 10 minutes. A couple more casts. Another cast, one more cast. <laughs> Definitely the last fish, one more fish. Yeah, 
Oh, we're in. Not the monastery is open to finish on. Nonetheless, a clear beauty. You coming up one more cast? I have to come back in this one when I've got a bit more time. Have a full day at it, bring a whole bucket full of them for days. Especially, I've been catching all morning. No pike in the swim. No fish being taken by pike anyway. Hello, one more. Definitely the last fish. That's it. Ten tubs empty. Just feeding tears on our own now. Definitely last fish now. I need a little one. Right, well I hope you like this video. We should uh, get packed away. And uh, we'll see what we've got. Right, we'll have a quick look at what we've got. That's a funky one there. Look at them for three hours on a Sunday morning. around about 50 roach in there. Absolute clunkers as well. That's one of the nicest roach catches I've ever done here on a Sunday morning. Absolutely stunning. It's just the, the sheer quantity of decent quality roach. And it just shows you hemp and tears really works this time of year. It's getting put back. Twelve o'clock. <laughs> Look at that fresh super netter fish. Let's put them back. See if we can see him go. I'm keeping him in the water as much as possible. Look at that big one there though. There's lots of big ones in there. Oh, what a net of fish that was. Absolutely awesome. Really enjoyed this morning session. Glad it came now. It's one of them things, Sunday morning, oh, couldn't be bothered to come, but when it's calm like this, mild, with no frost last night, a bit of rain a couple of days ago, a bit of colour in the water, it's running through nice. The really came onto the tear. Makes it all worthwhile, catch, catch a, a nice net of fish like that. Every one roach, all caught on tear, all in, what, three and a half hours. 
absolutely beautiful but i, I mean i hope you enjoyed the video it's uh, another one of my favorite uh, ways of fishing one of my favorite sessions on the trent as well in the last few weeks it's been absolutely uh, awesome but uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching uh, please get the like and subscribe bye for now